is pretty tanky. He's looking to drop another stun. The Dragonite's in a bit of trouble. Oh. Stun goes out onto Jacko. BYB this trying to mistake. get ahead to block here. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work out. Oh, he's going to get another Wraith Flag Blast. If he can just catch up here, trying to get up the hill, but the laser will take him down. And if he's had any sort Ones that matter a little bit more. Uh, oh, oh, Jetsy Bass in some trouble. That's the combination from the Centaur and the Skywrath. That range on Mystic Flare and that cooldown is so short. Only a minute at level 1 and then 40 and 20. Uh, most likely going to see the 40 second cooldown the most. This you know, level 11 is generally attainable for Skywrath level 16. Not so often, but here we go now. Looking up here onto the Wraith King. Being all over the map. He's killed the Ancient Apparition. Now he initiates onto the Wraith King. So Sports play hard, maybe an additional dragon that comes in with a follow up stun. Already rank 2. Rank 2 dragon kill. Still high density. Or another Centaur Sky pickoff. They'll find the Wraith King once more. Still level 5. And even if he was level 6, in this game, he's probably not going to scale that reincarnate until the middle of a team fight. I expect him to be holding on to that level 6 skill point for, for quite a while. Because you don't want to just die and have that on a 5 minute cooldown. But, uh,. Uh, Almost down, one more right click, will not survive, but he will get the Necronomicon off, and with the lasso, that's enough damage to bring down Shenfrey. Oh, he gets the mech off this time on the Alchemist, but it's not going to be quite enough, retreating through the fire with the Napalm, and of course, into the March of the Machines. Uh-oh, Super in some trouble, will the Double Edge will be brought down by the Wolves. Can they get play hard? They can. Here comes uh, the Skyrath Mage, once again, with that Blink Dagger being very... Hey, the stun is not there. Ice Shard is also going to block because it's just a physical barrier similar to uh, Fisher. JYC not able to get the Alchemist in that snowball fast enough before Jacko brings him down. And JYC, his last death just moments ago was to this Tinker. Now he's forced to run away. Will blink. He blinks out as well. And we've got another killing spree. Yeah, the Skyrath. Hoping to get another wall. It's punched up what he can't do before he dies. Now, Anime respawning after the reincarnate. Now, Jacko is here picking up an easy double kill, looking for the rockets onto uh, TYND. We'll find it, Juke, through the tree line. Hey, soon that'll yeah, be Yeah, exactly. Not quite yet, though. <laughs> exactly my thoughts there. <laughs> he will fall surrounded in the trees. This time travel is six have a, a wing condition other than try to break down the racks up against Ice Blast plus March. They have the pipe, which is really good, but they just didn't have all, all their stuff in sync right when they needed to. They just fight enough on the right person. In the end, they weren't able to get a successful fight in, in the enemy base. Go up one more point in the Star Ladder group stage. Yeah, indeed, and it's a long Star Ladder Southeast Asian day with, uh, well, probably the best game today at the very end. Titan vs. Johnny's Revenge coming up in four more games, but it's a long day, so I'm still finishing up my breakfast. We're going to go to a commercial break here. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed so far, but before we go, shout out to Star Ladder, shout out to Beyond the Summit for having us on. I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch at Heliumbrella and Blaze here at Blaze Casting. We hope you stick around. The schedule will be on your screen soon, so you can see what's coming up. Stay tuned. Making, and it's gonna be Slicks in the middle lane on the Lycan as you called it, and that's immunity. Uh oh, early, early, uh, early aggression oh. here. Shatan trying to drop a ward or just get some intel. He does drop the ward, will burrow straight into the camp, but he's going down as the first blood over to OK. Century. We're still watching Shatan up here on the top lane. We got ADTR in some trouble. I think Shatan's in a little bit more now because now the Living Armor comes out. Trian yeah. not going down, and he still packs a punch. We'll just get the Sand King swatting that Scorpion away, finds the kill. Invasion up to 3-1 right now at 5 minutes, but it's immunity in the bottom lane with their auras. They just killed Ghost once. He's taken his first death after getting only 5 last hits, and the push onto the tower. Oh, pretty pain. Oh, and Kachikimba in the middle lane again, gonna kill the Lycan. Looks like he will die from the Wolf Slash Tower hit. Lycan, yeah, gets the trade off there. Slightly at the tier 1 tower in the bottom lane should fall. Skywrath, okay, looking to get some intel zone out. Maybe, yeah, what's he looking for? Trying to find Shatan. Oh, he sees the sandstorm. If he was level 6, he could just, like, drop the sentry and get the kill, but it's not going to happen. Tire, uh, we'll get the tower there in the bottom lane. That falls. Kachik, Imba with... There's an Ancient Seal and the Queen of Pink Combo. The Hand of God, though, will come out. Now ADTR to fall. There's 70 damage still in one ball. They continue to chase. There's that Mask of Madness that is the choice here for FC FC. And uh, it's going to be Nature's Prophet catch who gets it, up on the back. trying to find that kill, but yeah, Kajikimbo's going to get it on the Razor there. The Just Sand King and Chen with the buybacks, all of them grouped together. This is pretty much the chance in this game for Invasion to bring it back to the break. This count comes out. We'll be brought down immediately. He's going to be swapped out with the right click. Not going to disjoin a good overgrowth here from the tree. And as 
well rescue if you come down immediately they plus two, but it's FC, FC is involved. Oh, Jing Inbox. So much damage, they can't kill Slicks, they can't kill Balls, and they're just obliterating the enemy team the next But the silence doesn't connect, they can just shape shift away. Yeah, so he's gonna use it here. Balls a little bit. Shatan's going for this. He runs out of mana, doesn't quite have enough for the epicenter. He had the wand charges, but then the silence comes up. The hand of God can keep them alive. Ghost though will TP in for the side of invasion. They bring everybody down, so the tier two falls. Kit, but it's really, really good, honestly. Okay, really not too close to that ancient seal, but yeah. still pretty good. Yeah, level one at point eight percent. That's the biggest factor here. But uh they go ahead, they But it's all damage types, right? Yeah. Just big enhancement, but as far as the tail end of that team fight, actually, and then I don't know if they could have stopped that team fight. They, <laughs> okay. I, I think the most questionable um, that goes thing goes back to the lobby talk, but uh, I think the most questionable thing about that late game excursion, not just the the duo pickoff on the top lane, but the fact that Nature Prophet just bought a Scotty. He wasn't able to buy yeah. back because he bought an Eye of Scotty, and as we saw, swapped into five people that didn't do him any favors. So he lost his second life, wasn't able to go for any rap plays, wasn't even able to fight within his own base. It was invasion backs against the wall already, and just forced. To, to buy back early. They they really were under the gun, and it was a difficult situation to come back from, but uh, a couple mistakes allowed immunity to hammer the nail back in the coffin and slam it shut. So we do see them really in a, a, a nice position as far as regaining confidence as a team. Uh, they are obviously already progressing their item builds towards what we can expect with the next patch, and uh, they're trying to just be innovators here uh, as they progress as individuals and as a single unit. So props to them for taking this game. And uh, although it was only 39 minutes long, it really felt like a long one. Yeah, it did. All right, well, that's Star Ladder Season 10. We've got, what, three more games coming up here today in the Southeast Asian region. So make sure to stay tuned here at twitch.tv slash Dota Star Ladder underscore EN. And as always, shout out to Star Ladder and Beyond the Summit for allowing us to cast here on their behalf. And before we go into a little bit of a break here, I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter or Twitch at Helium Brella and Blaze here. You can follow him at Blaze Casting. Please let us know what you thought, and we'll be back momentarily with some more games stay tuned right clicks coming in from the Rubik don't really amount to all that much so they're gonna bait him a little bit further look for the searing chains and now look to go yeah, he gets the damage reduction off, but there's still that shield that does so much damage to the flame guard, so even though they don't have the right clicks, which honestly they DDZ, DDZ is gonna be in some trouble. He will throw the exorcism this way, maybe gonna go down for it. Trying to get one more crypt swarm, but the right clicks from ADTR is enough. They will get him. Wraith King kills DDZ, and elsewhere Shadow Deep is gonna go ahead and take out the Rubik. That's uh okay, so he gets the trade there with the Shadow Poison, so Rubik falls. Uh, See by breaking out the first ravage of the game, John Z lands on just about everyone. Rubik not able to steal them, it's on cooldown. He got in that it makes assassin though will be the first to fall and is now Lance trying to be focused up here. Rather, he's focusing on Cheek Imba and he will get the kill and they continue to run away. ADTR with another Wraith Fire Blast. FCFZ though just dancing. It's actually pretty impactful that FCFC missed the Syrian Chains there because uh, there is a possibility that he could have did TP back to base before the Shadow Poison ended. But because uh, obviously the Syrian Chains didn't connect and FCFC, I'm sorry, Mosin was still alive, he was able to obviously manually about to kill him as we roll through. Another nice defensive disruption, uh, but no one dead yet. It's going to be the right thing who will fall first, but Aegis has already been uh, claimed up here by FCFD, and he's going to get a mega kill. We'll zoom out there to get all the team fight. Kajik Imba barely, barely alive as it looks like a wrath of nature. Gonna the FC can jump onto the back line, start focusing on the support, oh. slate of fist will get it. He's unstoppable right now. Three chains on the back line to Lance. Lance, the Lycan is falling as well. Zhang Z uses a fairly defensive Ravage to retreat, but meanwhile, ADTR is more big a double kill. One oh. more split. This is gonna get them both! It's a triple kill! FCFC initiating on like four of them by himself. He's been dropping in his remnants aggressively. ADTR fill up the stuns. We're looking to bounce that here just 18 minutes after taking a rack. Can they just aim the last one? He still has that Aegis. Look at this meatball, though. Can't retreat into there. Mosin might die trying to run back in. And yes, indeed, he will. Godlike for FCFCs. They're actually fountain diving at 18 minutes in. Kajik Inbo will be the first to fall as FC responds here from the Aegis. He might still 
put on to DDZ just didn't pan out. They didn't get the return of interest on Mosin literally sitting at level one for the first four minutes of the game stacking creeps. Like they were trying to accomplish a lot by investing a ton into this one core hero, which could just explode at around like the 20 minute mark with the Midas build up with all these major items. But he was farming while the team needed to fight. And then when they tried to fight without him, it just was an absolute disaster. This racking up the deaths, feeding the Ember Spirit, and suddenly it's just completely out of their hands. So it was really well played from Invasion, but I have to think that Arrow need to look back at this replay and think, okay, where do we need to be at this point in time? Was this the right movement? And if not, how can we avoid them in the future? Because that was very, very hard to watch. Arrow, they, they were lacking direction. They need to really get their stuff together to move forward in this scene, but at least for now, Invasion, they take a, a nice spirited win after their difficult defeat against Immunity Indeed. earlier. Yeah, losing while ahead in golden XP in that game, losing to Immunity, but I, I think, honestly, it was Ember Spirit was such a key hero here. Like, that's a big, big part of it. So you can look back at the draft and say, all right, well, maybe if we want to do this next time, we ban Ember. Like, at no point during this game were they ever going to bring down Flame Guard. Like, I guess Death Prophet, but in the team fights, hard to land two or three Crypt Swarms. And clearly, not only was Ember played well, but it was a perfect fit. 10-0-14. That's the game. We got one more coming up today. It's going to be a good one. I'll flip over to it right now. It's going to be Titan versus Johnny's Revenge coming up next. So do stay tuned here. And as always, big shout out to Starlander Beyond the Summit for having us on. I'm Helium. You can follow me on Twitter or Twitch at Heliumbrella and Blaze here. My great insightful co-caster. Follow him at Blaze Casting. And we'll be back. So stay tuned. The retreat, he did have that time walk after all, and they're gonna go back into the pit. They've got the six iron lines up right now. Still feeling very, very strong. Mushi's gonna run though with that flame guard. Stun off on the shark. The shark, he might be the first one to fall over. They're gonna Mushi. It's gonna be close. It's Mushi first float over to Johnny's Revenge quickly. The Enigma will fall now. Ohio trying to. Experiencing a lot of pressure coming out from Johnny and Sharky. The summons are here and they're ready to rumble. No points in Slide of Fist at this early level means that they are going to be able to get some good push damage on the bottom, but in the mid, Chibi's Chibi. going down. He is indeed. The supports are going to rotate over once again and they'll bring him get into a fighting force around level 10, level 11. Right now, Andy Slash onto Extinct. He will be brought down very quickly, but net quick on his feet. The Sprout will be Tango through, and he should be able to get out of this one, but no Sprout comes. Johnny sees the Tango, says it's wor not worth his time, and it's gonna be the right clicks onto Winter here. Unproc. Mm -hmm. We'll head him down, but Ohio able to TP out, and I think KYXY in the bottom lane might be able to pick off this tower. tower. Um, maybe doesn't want to put it into deny so, range, but I think he's pretty committed. The four spirits just tanking it up. Winter has stole the chrono there, and although he couldn't Dyer's get in range for the Skywrath, there was a small window where he could actually the remnant that will pick up Johnny almost immediately with the searing chains. Mushi is just playing incredible right now, oh trying to chase the healing ward. It's still online. Mushi, cooldown on that chain in one second. He will use it now on the shark. He's gonna get them both next to Sharky to fall. Now Link silenced up. They're gonna bring him down. They're diving tier threes right now at 16 minutes. Nothing to stop it. They want to use the black hole. They're going to look to go in, and uh, the Mailer Axe will stand. It is going to be Time Walk stolen. He can use it to follow Ohio after the Time Walk and try to go for the Telekinesis, but right now they're happy that they just got a base. Oh, no Chibi. chibi. No, no Chibi. chibi. Oh, my still doesn't matter. God. Too many stuns. Too much damage. Sunstrike. Top lane. That's actually Skyrath that gets the kill, but Sunstrike doing a lot. And now top lane. Johnny's in too much trouble. Mushi actually scraps that Ember Spirit. The answer to the annoying heroes. He shuts down Lycan in the last... Roshan is the target of choice. When they get the Roche, they're going to get a huge leg up in their attempt to break the high ground. But there are tools to try to prevent it. Obviously, the March of Machines. Actually, bottom lane, Chibi got the BOTs, but that's all he's going to get here as Ohio drops the Corona right on top. I've got to run. Johnny, try oh, to get out man. of there. Gusset Blast coming in. Literally just standing still. There's nothing he can do. He dies. Spade. He knows what to do. And Sharky, though, with a black hole. The KOA XY will be canceled there by the swap from Extinct. Ling with the damage here with the spin. Trying to bring him down, but is it going to be enough? The bash has come out here from Ohio. He will actually just jump. 
farm. They have nowhere to just create space and create opportunities. Every time they leave the base, they're dead men walking because this face is void and his axe that's going to be would would have been coming after the maelstrom. But oh, man, you got to hand it to Titan. They just played this game so expertly. X and net on the early support Skyrath vengeful spirit roaming down to a T and then Mushi he got some space he got some time built up some basic core items and then when he got the skill set when he had the chains the sleight of fist everything he needed he was able to just play the ember spirit in a way that I've never seen before absolutely insane from him across the board Titan just a r profound victory and it puts them in a great spot here in star ladder southeastern asia for those wondering about the standings uh, in two days time johnny's revenge will be playing up against iap execration who previously beat titan if johnny's revenge wins that match we have a three-way tie between these top teams if jr get knocked out then it's actually IAP to advance uh, if we're looking at head-to-head -head specifically. Not 100% sure on that if we're going to go into tiebreaker mode, but if it's just head-to-head, -head, Titan need JR to win that game. But for now, they are still in it. They played an amazing game here, and it was just a pleasure to watch it and cast it with you, man. Yeah, it really was. It was insane. I thought FZ, FZ was going to be the best Ember Spirit I got to see today, but... I was wrong. It was Mushi. Mushi did quite well. And yeah, guys, uh, the standings might get complicated depending on who wins what, but basically just hope for more Star Ladder Southeast Asia. Hope for the three way tie. That's all we've got here for today. I know Zayori and Gods are already over on, uh, I think they went live on Beyond the Summit, just the, the main channel there. With Star Ladder Europe, they might switch back over here after a game. Either way, stay tuned to everything. Uh, big shout out to Star Ladder to Beyond the Summit for having us on their behalf. Uh, and of course, buy that ticket, follow the Twitch channel, and of course, you can support us, follow us on Twitter. I'm at Heliumbrella, and Blaze here at BlazeCasting. Thanks for watching, everyone, and have a beautiful day or evening. Peace.